how we can improve our basic loader program a bit. We're going to use a read statement automatically from a data statement that we're going to put at the end of our program. We're going to read the value of x, location 50,000, 01. And then Hey everyone, welcome back. In the first part of this episode, we took a look at the basic peek and poke commands, which allowed us to read values that are stored in memory locations to enter new values into memory locations, as well as we took a look at how to convert an assembly language program into a machine code program by manually looking up the instructions for each command and converting that into machine code. So after doing that, we ended up with a six byte program but now we need to somehow enter that machine code program into memory in our computer. So how can we get our six byte machine code program loaded into our computer's memory? Well, the way we're going to do that is by creating a basic loader program that will do that for us. We could do it manually by manually poking those six bytes into memory, but let's make our lives a bit easier and create a basic program to do that for us. So what I'm going to do since I already know that our program only contains six bytes of data that we need to load into memory. I'm going to create a program that cycles through six times using a for next loop. And if you're familiar with basic for next loops, this will be quite obvious to you how I'm doing this. Um, it's a very simple basic program, but it should do the job for us. And before we do that, however, we should discuss where in memory we want to save our program because there's only certain spots in memory that are available to us because some of the memory inside the Sinclair Spectrum computer or the ZX Spectrum Next computer is reserved for other things. So we want to find a location in memory that's not being used for anything else that we can safely use to store our machine code program. So we're using an 8-bit computer, which if you remember from one of our previous videos, has the ability to access approximately 65,000 memory locations. And generally speaking, the upper end of those locations should be available for us to use. So in this case, I'm going to choose memory location 30,001 as our starting location. And since we have six bytes of data that we need to store, I'll be storing those in memory locations 30,001 to 30,006. So let's start typing our basic loader program now. And I'm going to start by typing line 10. And I'm using a for next loop here, so I'm going to type 4. And for our variable, I'll just use a. So 4a equals, and then I'll put the starting address the, where we want to store our first byte of data, which is 30,001. And then I'll put 2, 30,006. Enter. So that will start off a loop that will count from 30,001 to 30,006. And then every time we cycle through this loop, we want to store a byte of our machine code program into memory. But first we need to tell the computer what our machine code program bytes are. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to enter them manually as the program is running. So I'm going to use an input command to prompt the user to enter the bytes one by one as the program is running. So I'll put line 20 input and now let's put a prompt for the user so that they know what information the computer is waiting for so i'll press Control p to get a quotation mark and then i'll put enter machine code byte space then Control p to get another quote then i'll put a semicolon and then i'll use another variable to store our machine code byte which will be X, enter. Okay, so now we need to, once we've collected that byte of data, we need to store it into memory. So all we need to do that is use a poke statement as we looked at in the first part of this episode. So I'll put line 30, poke, and we're going to poke the address that the for next loop is counting. And it does that using the variable A, so I'm going to poke A, comma, followed by the byte of data that we entered as the program was running, which is now being stored in X. So I'll put 
X. Okay, good. And now what I'll do is I'm going to put another line of code here, which will print on the screen both the memory location as well as the contents of the memory location that we just entered into the program. So I'll put 40, print, and now I want the memory location, so I'll put A and then comma. So the comma will move the print position over to halfway across the screen. And now we want the contents of that memory location, so I'll put peak A. So that should print the memory location address as well as the contents of that address that we just loaded into that address. And then all we need to do now is finish our loop. So I'll put line 50 next A. And that's it. So we have our complete loader program now. And if we run it, the computer is asking us now to enter our machine code program, which is those six bytes of data that we worked out from our assembly language program earlier. And those six bytes are 33, 80, 195, 54, 255, and 201. Okay, so now our machine code program is stored in memory beginning at address 30,001 and going up until address 30,006. And now let's remember what our program is designed to do. Our program, if you remember, is designed to load the value 255 into another memory location, which is location 50,000. First of all, let's check what value is contained in address location 50,000 right now. So to do that, I'm just going to type print peak 50,000. And you can see it contains the value of zero. And the way we run our machine code program is by using the randomize user command. So don't ask me exactly how that works or what it means or what it does, because I don't really know exactly what randomize user means, but that's how we do it. So we're going to enter the randomize keyword first, which is on the T key. So I'll press the T key. And then we need USR, which is above the L key. So I'll go into extended mode by pressing Control Shift and then L. And now we simply type in the address where our machine code program begins, which is address 30001. So now our program has executed. The OK message printed on the screen shows us that it accepted our command and our program has finished running. So now if we check the value of memory location 50,000 by typing print peak, oops, not O, print peak 50,000, we should get a value of 255, which we do. So our program is working perfectly. So that was pretty easy. Machine code might seem scary and difficult when you're not familiar with it, and I'm certainly not very familiar with it, but so far we've done pretty well. I think we've translated an assembly language program into Z80 machine code, and we've entered it into the memory of our computer, and we've executed it. So let's play around with it a little bit. Let's say, for example, we want to modify our program so that instead of storing the value 255, into address 50,000, we want to store, let's say, value 100. So we can do that easily by just modifying our program in memory directly. So we can see here that at location 30,005, that's where it stores this value 255, which is the value that it's storing into memory location 50,000 when the program runs. So if we wanted to change that value to, let's say, 100, we could just poke it directly. So if we enter poke, and it's at address 30,005, so I'll enter 30,005, comma, 100. Now when our program runs, it should load the value 100 into memory location 50,000, because that's what our program is designed to do, right? So right now, all I've just done there is modify our program in memory. I haven't executed the program again, so location 50,000 should still contain our old value of 255, right? So we'll just confirm that by doing a print peak 50,000, and you see it still comes up with our old value of 255, but now if we execute our program again, our modified program, by typing randomize, which is on the T key, 
and then USR, which is above the L. And then our program is stored, remember, at location 30,001. So I need to type in 30,001 here. And when I press enter, it's going to execute our program again with our new value that we just entered. So there, the program should have run now. And if everything went to plan, location 50,000 should now contain the value of 100. So let's check that by going print peak 50,000. And sure enough, it does contain the value that we were expecting. And just for fun, why don't we check the values in memory where our program is stored just to confirm that our program was actually modified. So let's go look at our basic listing again. And now let's create another short basic add-on to this program to display the values of our machine code program in memory. So to do that, I'll create another for next loop at let's say line 100, I'll say four, and I'll use a different variable. Let's say F equals 30,001 to 30,006, then 110, I'm going to just print the values of those memory locations. So I'll say print, and then the address would be F, and then comma, the value that's in that memory location. So I'm going to put peak F, and then 120, next F. So now if we run just that section of our program, starting at line 100, you can see it prints the contents of memory where we stored our machine code program. And now this memory location, 30,005, contains the value of 100. So we can see we did successfully change the contents of our machine code program after it was stored in memory. Now let's see how we can improve our basic loader program a bit so that it's a bit easier for us to use. So now what I want to do, first let me get rid of those extra lines I added. 100, 110, and 120. So now let's modify our basic program to automatically enter the program into memory for us. So the way we do that is first let's modify line 20 so that instead of asking the user to enter the values of the bytes that make up the machine code program, we're going to read those values automatically from a data statement that we're going to put at the end of our program. So in order to do that, we're going to use a read statement. So instead of using an input statement to store the value into variable X, we'll use a read statement. So we'll put line 20 read, whoops, not run, read, where's read? So it looks like read is above the A key over here on our mini keyboard. So we'll go into extended mode and press the A key, read X. So now line 20 is going to read the value of X from a data statement, but we still need to enter that data statement. And so let's do that now. Let's enter line 100 and then data, which is above the D key. And now we're going to put our machine code bytes into this data statement. So I'll enter those now, which is 33 comma 80 comma 195 comma 54 comma 255 and finally comma 201 and remember this 255 value here that's the value that our program is going to store into memory location 50,000 so maybe we can change that up again as, as well let's change that to maybe 99 nice memorable number there, so now we have our machine code program stored in the form of a data statement. And now when we run this program, it's going to automatically read our machine code bytes from that data statement and store them into memory for us. And you can see the results on the screen here. It looks like it worked. And you can see the new value we entered, 99, is now stored in address 30,005. And now if we run this program by typing randomize user 30,001. Now memory location 50,000 should contain our new value of 99. So let's check that out. Print peak 50,000. And there it is, 99. So there you go. Now we have a modified basic program 
that automatically loads our machine code program into memory for us, beginning at the first address indicated in our for next loop and then ending at the last address. So you could use this basic loader program to store a machine code program into memory as long as you know how many bytes are contained within that machine code program. So there we go. In just a few minutes, we've created our first pure machine code program that uh, I think not too many other people on the planet can probably say that they've been able to do. And we converted a Z80 assembly language program into Z80 machine code. And now we're ready to continue on with our programming journey. We now are familiar with bits and bytes, as well as the binary and hexadecimal counting systems. We took a look at the internal architecture of an 8-bit microcomputer, so we are now familiar with things like address buses and the data bus and the memory chips, and we know how the memory and the address bus and the data bus work together along with the central processor, the CPU. And we did a comparison between basic and machine code to see the impressive speed difference between the two. Wow. As well as we even took a brief look at a Z80 assembly language program, and we actually created our own Z80 machine code program, entered it into the computer, modified it and executed it, and it uh, wasn't all that difficult, I think. So I think now we're in a good place to go forward in learning to program some games for the ZX Spectrum Next computer or the Sinclair Spectrum computers, whatever you're interested in. And so I think we've done pretty well so far. And let's keep going and see how far we can get. So I thank you for watching. And as always, if any of you would like to help support me on this journey by becoming a Patreon subscriber, feel free to head over to patreon.com forward slash SpriteWorks and check out the different subscription levels and rewards that are available to you there. If that's something you might be interested in, I appreciate any help that uh, anyone's willing to give. And so let's keep going forward and see how far we can get on our journey. We have some exciting stuff coming up. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.